Welcome to the Zion Grove Assembly of God. We're so glad to, to have you with us today. Uh, sorry that we can't be together in our church services. Uh, Brian Kemp, our governor, has opened up churches right now to begin uh, doing the, the uh, church thing again, but uh, there's some very strict restrictions that, that he has given to us. And, and uh, right now, because most of our people are vulnerable uh, to this disease, I felt that, that we should just wait a few more weeks before we actually do that. When we do open up the church, probably uh, from Mother's Day, I'm looking at if everything goes well. But when we do open up the church, we'll have some uh, guidelines for you to follow and things will not be as normal yet. But we will get through this and we will get back to normal, hopefully very, very soon. Amen. Thank you so much for those of you who have been mailing your, your tithe checks to us, to, to the church. And thank you so much for, for your prayers and your support, for your cards and letters and so forth. It's been very encouraging. And I just want to thank you again today for those things. All right. Let's get into this today. I'm going to read to you from Hebrews chapter 12. Beginning at, at, at verse 1. Therefore we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us. And let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, for, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Amen. Would you bow your heads and just pray with me? Father, thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your word, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, for the opportunity that we have to share, again, the message of Jesus Christ. And I just pray today, Lord God, that you would bless the preaching of your word. I ask for your anointing, Lord, upon the speaker and upon those who will listen and hear today. I ask, Father God, that you would make clear the message today in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Praise God. We are in a race right now. This is the Christian race. Uh, we are running for a prize, and the prize is worth all that we're going through. Uh, but we, we have to run the race. I was thinking about this the other day as I was walking my dog around the, 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 the uh, graveyard, the yard here, at the church, uh, and everybody that attends this church knows these stories so well because I tell them every Sunday, but, but as I was walking around with my dog, and again, uh, he loves to walk and he loves to run, I don't love running so very much, and uh, I tried to run a little bit one day and, and uh, just about killed myself doing it and, and decided that probably walking will be the best thing for me for right now. But um, as I was thinking about that, this passage of Scripture came to mind, and, and uh, I, I came up with a title uh, for this message. The title of this message is, Running the Race, A Fat Man's Perspective. And so if you will, please just per permit me to share with you some thoughts from this passage of Scripture. Several years ago, I was looking for some life insurance, and I saw an advertisement on television that you could buy $150,000 worth of term life insurance for about $19.99 a month. And I thought, wow, that's very affordable. I think I'm going to do that. And so I, I called the number on the screen and began to talk to the guy. And he said, yes, great. I can help you with that. And, and he said, well, first, let me just ask you a few questions. And, and about five or ten minutes later, he said, well, to tell you the truth, that $19.99 price was for Olympic athletes, for those that were very thin and very athletic and were able to, to, to uh, do athletic things, and you don't quite fit the bill. And they come to find out that it was going to cost me about $100 a month to uh, get that same life insurance. And, and so uh, I very quickly said, well, sorry, I can't quite afford that right now. So that, that's not going to happen. But anyway, it hurt my feelings. Uh, that that uh, I was not able to do that for 1999, and because I was still young, I was still in my 30s, and and was, was still athletic. I thought I could run a little bit. My brothers are watching this right now, I'm sure, and they're laughing at me. But but uh, I was able to play basketball and run and do all those kind of things, and and thought, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna get in shape, and I'm gonna get that 19 dollar 
uh, discount on, on my insurance. And, and uh, so I began to, to make a plan to do this. And so I thought the best thing to do would be to get up early in the morning and to begin running. And so I set out and I, I found my course that I was going to run around the neighborhood and decided that two miles a day would be plenty for me. And so that's what I decided I was going to do. I also began a diet-a-thon uh, in my church that Sunday. Uh, and if you don't understand what that is, basically I, I got up on, the, on a scale in front of the church and had someone look at the scale. And they wrote down that weight amount. And at the time, I think it was like 100, I mean 250 pounds, uh, uh, which uh, was heavy for me back then. Right now, I'd love to be 250 pounds. But, but uh, I, I set out that I was going to lose about 30 pounds in a month. And I had them pledge me by the pound of how much they thought that, that they wanted to pay if I could lose about 30 pounds. And I told them that I was going to do my very best and I was going to, to do what I could to, to lose that weight and, and uh, get ready and get in shape so that I could, I could get that, that better price uh, for, for insurance. Well, there are some things that I discovered while I was running those two miles. And uh, I, mean, I think you need to really understand, and again, my brothers are laughing because they know how I run. My, my run was actually, a, was actually a jog, and if you want to be truthful about it, it might be a, a slow, fast walk. Uh, I was doing about uh, a mile in, in 15 minutes or something like that. And so it was not a very fast mile. And so uh, uh, I, as, I, as I was doing this, I was beginning to, to uh, understand that this running thing was not really for me. And I've, I've got some thoughts about running the race, which in, in, in a fat man's perspective. And let me just say the first thing that I come to understand is that there is no such thing as a runner's high. Runners talk about it all the time, how they love to get out and how peaceful it is to get out and run. And they, they get to this certain place when they're running and it's just a high for them. And they're, they're, there's, there's solitude there and there's, there's peace there. And they're, they're, they, they, they get this, this exuberance of all their, while they're running. Well, let me just tell you, from a pat, fat man's perspective, there is no such thing as a runner's high. Uh, our scripture tells us that, that we are to run with endurance this race. Let me just tell you, there's no place in the scripture that says that running the race is going to be fun. The race before us is hard. That's why Paul said that we had to endure it. The Christian walk or the Christian race is not about how much fun it is. In fact, when we look back at our text in verse 2, we find that Jesus endured the cross and its shame. In Galatians chapter 3, verse 13, it says that Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. Jesus loved the idea, uh, idea so much that he cried in the garden, let this cup pass from me. We can't begin to understand that moment as the Son of God looked forward to, to that place where the sins of the world would be placed on Him. And He understood that God would not look upon sin and that they would be separated. And in that moment, He cried out, Oh my God, let this cup pass from me. We can never even begin to imagine what he went through on that cross when he began to cry out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Can you begin to understand how that God the Father and God the Son, who have been together for eternity, and now because sin had been placed upon, uh, upon Jesus, he who knew no sin was made sin, that God the Father had to turn his back on his own Son, we can't even begin to imagine what he was going through. No, my friend, let me tell you that the race is not supposed to be fun. 
but it's worth it. It's worth it. Again, in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 24 and 25, Paul writes, do, do you not know that those that run in a race all run, but only one receives the prize? Run in such a way that you may obtain it. And everyone who competes for the prize is tempered in all things. Now, they do it to obtain a perishable crown, but we for an imperishable crown. Let me tell you that at the end of that dietathon, after 30 days of dieting and running for two miles every day, I was able to lose about 35 pounds. My goal was 30, and I lost about 30, 35 pounds at the end of that dietathon. It was worth it. Uh, I didn't like it. It wasn't fun, but I got what I wanted out of it. I was able to lose some weight and, and to, to raise some money for our Speed the Light goal. The second thing that I want to, to, to tell you from a fat man's perspective is that car exhaust will choke you out. Car exhaust will choke you out. I'd always heard that the best time to run was before sunrise, and so I decided that I would get at about 5.30, and, or I would get out and I would begin running at about 5.30. What I didn't know was that that was the time that most of the folks in my neighborhood was getting out and leaving to go to work. And so as I was running, a car would pass by me, and it wouldn't, it wouldn't bother me the first few times. I was still breathing. I was still getting my breath. I was, everything was okay. But once I started getting past that first mile, and, and it began to, to struggle, and now I'm having to, to labor in my breathing, every time those cars would go by, it seemed like it would be the cars that passed me were the ones that were burning oil or something. And, and that smoke would begin to become toxic to me, and, and I couldn't hardly breathe. And, and let me just tell you that it made running so difficult because, because you've got to breathe if you're going to run too many times. We let the toxic fumes of fear or what others are saying about us or what others are thinking about us choke us out. It's bad enough that we have an uphill battle with the evils of today. Then some well-meaning saint criticizes you and it just takes the air out of you. I want you to notice that when Jesus started his ministry, the first thing that he faced was Satan who tried to discourage him and tried to tempt him uh, and tried to make him give up his mission right at the get-go. But it was then that, that we, we find uh, Jesus speaking the word of God to Satan and telling him to, to get behind him. Remember what happened when, when, when Jesus was telling his disciples that he was going to be crucified, that he was going to, to be taken and killed, that Peter thought he was going to be the hero, and he said, no way, Lord, there's no way we're going to let you do this. You can't die. You're the Messiah. Jesus was so aggravated that he erupted, and he began to shout at Peter, and he said, get thee behind me, Satan. You're an offense to me, for you are not mindful of the things of God, but the things of men. There are lots of times that there are well-meaning people who, who want to, to give you good advice, but it goes completely against what God has told you to do. It goes completely against what God's Word says. And let me just tell you that our standard is not people's opinions. Our standard is not what everybody else wants to do. Our standard is the Word of God, and we have to go by what God's Word says to do. Car exhaust will choke you out. People will, will, will try their best to, to give you good advice, but it's bad advice because it goes against what God has told us to do. And it will try to, to hinder you from doing what God wants you to do. A third thing that I noticed from a fat man's perspective about running the race is that if you eat before you run, you've defeated your purpose already. Now, I'm not talking about eating some little energy bar or, or a banana or something before you go out. But what I'm talking about is eating a full set, uh, you know, eggs and bacon breakfast or, or a big bowl of cereal or whatever. I'll just tell you something, folks. When you do that, you're going you're gonna to be regretting it all the way through your run. And if, if you're able to keep it down, you're going to wish you got rid of it because, because it's not a fun thing 
to try to run and jerk all that food around while you're running. You just can't do it. There comes a time when you have to decide if you're serious about this race or not. The, our text tells us to lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us. Jesus told us in Matthew chapter 6, verse 24, No man can serve two masters, for he will either hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. I'm just here to tell you something, folks. There comes a time in this relationship with the Lord where we have to decide whether we're going to live for Jesus or we're going to live for the world. We're going to chase after our, our goals and our dreams or we're going to listen to what God says and do what he wants us to do. Uh, in the garden, Jesus cried, Father, if it, in your will, let this cup pass from me. But then he continued and he said, but nevertheless, not what I desire, but your will be done in me. That's the prayer that the Christian needs to pray every single day. Because let me just tell you, my will so many times goes against what God's will is. We have to be careful for that. And so uh, let me just tell you again, folks, that eating before you run will defeat your purpose from a fat man's perspective. I said it in my first point. Running the race is not always fun. But it's worth it. Jesus told us about that in the, these last days. He said in Matthew 24, verses 12 and 13, that because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. But he who endures to the end will be saved. And again, we find in Revelation 21, verses 5 through 8, it says, Then he who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said to me, Write, Right, for these words are true and faithful. And he said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. And I will give the fountain of water of life freely to him who thirsts. He who overcomes shall inherit all things. And I will, see him, I will be his God, and he will be my son. But the cowardly, the unbelievable, uh, unbelieving, the abominable, the murderers, sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. So let me just finish with just one more scripture from Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. My encouragement to you today is keep on keeping on. Keep on running the race. Keep on in the way of God, and believe Him and trust Him, and He will be with you to give you strength through it all. No, running is not fun. There is no runner's high in this race, but it's worth it. And when, when we're running the race, there are going to be many who are going to come along and try to, to choke us out. But just keep on keeping on. And God's going to be with you. And he'll bring you through all of this. And also, don't be bogged down with the things of this life. Put your, put your eyes upon Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. And you'll make it just fine. God bless you as our prayer today. I trust that God will minister to you and keep you. And again, folks at Zion Grove Assembly, God, let me tell you again, I pray for you every day. I call out your name to God and believe God for healing. I believe God for protection and strength for the day. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you is our prayer. Bye-bye.